Hello and welcome to The Arise Interview, 60 glorious minutes of multifaceted discussion where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things and we feature the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagoro. Coming up in the next hour, progress to close the gender gap in global politics in general and Nigerian politics in particular has been, to say the least, glacial. That means, in effect, that it's been ludicrously slow. The 2019 general elections in Nigeria offered an opportunity to try to close the yawning gap between men and women in politics, but the scorecard, to say the least, has not been good. So, what are the greatest barriers for Nigerian women in politics? and how can they be removed? We'll speak with a wide range of experts as an international conference assessing the experiences of women in the 2019 Nigerian elections opens in Abuja. Now, you may not know this, but less than 20% of the world's politicians are women. And that number is even lower in Nigeria, where there are fears that with a conservative president just re-elected for a second term, the numbers might fall even further. During Nigeria's 2019 general elections, calls for change rang out around the world with women and progressive men demanding faster action. Well, it didn't happen. Far from it. All six women presidential candidates ended up withdrawing their candidacies. Well, this week in the Nigerian capital, Abuja, dozens of female politicians, academics, activists and donor partners, as well as scores of men and women in positions of influence from across the world, are meeting for an international summit to take stock of the experiences of women in the 2019 elections and to discuss how best to enhance their participation in Nigerian politics in the future. In a moment, I'll be joined by a team of experts from that conference. But first, here's a clip from the opening day of the summit. Clearly, there are many structural barriers that we have to overcome before then, and some of them would require that we look at political parties uh, very closely, because within that we see some of the resistance uh, to women and youth participation at lead, as leaders in winnable seats. We also have to look at the electoral system itself. That makes it tougher for women to compete on an equal footing. We also have to address realities, including women's limited access to financial resources to run uh, strong electoral campaigns. We also have to address the issues of uh, increasingly so gender-based political violence, violence against women in politics. And then we also have to look at the role of the media itself in, in, in perpetrating gender-based stereotypes. And that's a snippet there from the uh, conference that's just opened in Abuja. That is Comfort Lamptey, who is the United Nations Women Country Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS. And for the next 50 minutes or so, we'll be focusing on the aims of that conference and discussing the challenges facing Nigerian women in politics with a variety of participants at that summit. First off, I'm joined in the studio by the person you just saw in that video, the United Nations Women Country Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Comfort Lamte and by Honorable Aishatu Duku, who is a member of the Nigerian House of Representatives from Gombe State in the Northeast. Thank you very much indeed to both of you Thank for you. coming in. I know you've had a busy day, so we appreciate your taking the time. And you both are, of course, in prominent positions of leadership, governorship, politics, and you are obviously both women. Are you the exception? And I'll start with you, Comfort Lamte. Well, I probably have a, a, an easier uh, job because, unfortunately, <laughs> I didn't have to run mount an electoral campaign. But you still had to <laughs> be chosen. I still, yeah, that is true. But I think uh, certainly um, we are seeing uh, that more and more women uh, are vying for uh, political office, uh, perhaps slower than we would like to see. And uh, you shared the statistics of a uh, uh, quarter, maybe less than 20%. In West Africa, we're mm. probably about 14% or so uh, women elected to political office. 
And in Nigeria, alas, uh, this figure is, 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 is much lower, as we all know. Uh, we're under 5% uh, given uh, since the last elections. So I think it's um, to say we're the, uh, we're the exception, perhaps not. But I think the road ahead is, is still a, a tough one mm. uh, for women. And some of those barriers that are preventing women from uh, being able to serve in public office are the ones that we are hoping uh, through uh, fora like these ones and others to try to help uh, break. Mm. And Aisha to Duku, yeah. uh, the focus of this conference is, is of course to take stock and learn lessons from the participation of women or lack of during the 2019 general election. You took part in that ballot and you were clearly successful. Yeah. You are a member of the House of Representatives. Mm. You, you, this is your second sort of run. Yeah. What was the experience like for you as a woman taking part in that mm. election? Was it a punishing experience? Uh, well, thank you very much for having me first and foremost. I, I want to say that uh, for me, I come from the far northeast where women participation in politics is almost a taboo. Mm. But um, How did you break that taboo? My, my people standing Brilliant by me. Story. Yes, my people standing by me made it very, very possible. And uh, I still believe that first and foremost, we are human beings. Before mm. we are women, we are human beings. So we have a brain, we have the quality, and all the necessary things that you know, we need to contest an election. We have. So that is the number one yardstick that I believe people should look at. They should not look at us as women. Mm. And because we are women, we should be denied so many things. No. And uh, that's why I love this conference. The conference, you know, helps us to look at what did we do wrong mm. and what did we do right and what do we need to do and bring in the political parties to to show because as for me i come from the apc during our screening i saw a lot of women i was so happy i said wow this time it's going to be different mm. but unfortunately you know the primaries came fewer women and then the general election fewer but you, you made know? a very crucial point there yeah. that you're from the far northeast, yes. which is um, a fairly conservative part of mm -hmm. Nigeria. Mm -hmm. um, you had to obviously get past yeah. um, the selection process mm -hmm. in your political party. Yeah. I yeah. mean, you had to go through your own, your sort of, your local area, yes. and, and they then would sort of recommend you, mm -hmm. I, I presume, for, for sort of with the, the national party and so on. Yes. I mean, w was that difficult? Was that exceptionally difficult because you were a woman? No, it wasn't. It wasn't. Because I got endeared to my people, mm. and I explained every step to them. And of course, you've been a course, minister before, I've been so a minister. I suppose that, that yes. gave you exactly. uh, some Exactly. I've innings. been with my people. The right. connection, you know, is the number one thing. We cannot be politicians in Abuja. We have to get to the grassroots. Mm. And that is where we feel, some of us, the women, we, we get disconnected with our people. And once you are disconnected, there's no way you can make mm. it. You have to be connected and remain connected with your people and then believing in you that you can do something, you can make a difference. Of course, men have been on this seat. So what is this that I'm going to do different for my people? Mm. And that got them to believe in me. And so when it came to the primaries, I contested in 2015 against eight men, and mm. I defeated them. And then in 2019, again, I contested against men, and I still defeated them. So it is all about, you know, knowing who you are, that mm. you can do it, and then believing that your people also believe in you, and you can do it. Right. So that is it. Okay, let, let me bring the United Nations uh, Women Country Representative to Nigeria and echo us Comfort Lamptey in. I mean, what would you, you give us the bigger picture sort of thing. Um, what would you say are the greatest barriers for Nigerian women in politics? Is it culture? Is it religion? Or is it something else? Um, certainly uh, cultural barriers. Uh, well, clearly it's not it's can not affecting play a part, her. Can play a part. <laughs> well, I mean, I think uh, we, we're all products of, 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 of culture and, mm. and, 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 you know, culture is dynamic, it shifts, mm -hmm. but mm. we also do have certain cultural uh, beliefs that sometimes do not work in favor of women. 
And, and I think that that certainly has been a, a, a challenge. I also believe that, um, you know, at the end of the day, we, this is a space that women are coming into where men have dominated uh, forever. And, and I think that that in itself is a challenge. So mm. we need, it's not a level playing field. And so when you, when you are in that kind of a context, sometimes you do need to put in place measures. And, and I can only speak uh, from what, as the United Nations, we have seen and have supported in other countries around the world, that in order to be able to try to level the playing field, sometimes you do have to adopt temporary special measures mm. to support women who are coming into this space uh, uh, if, if you like, uh, for the first time for in, in, in most part. And, and many countries have adopted quota systems. I know that this is sometimes not thought of as being very fair. Yes, yeah, so I was going to talk about that later on, actually. <laughs> But certainly that has seemed to work. Right. And, and laws, you know, I think that we would need to have legislate this as well. Um, and, and the countries around Africa, that we have seen which have made tremendous strides in getting women into pub public office and decision making have actually brought in on board legislation to do so. Mm. And, and so I think that at some stage we, we do have to face this, that uh, this might be the way, because otherwise if we're just waiting on the goodwill of uh, 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 the people in mm. power to provide women the space that might take a very long time. Right. Well, we'll talk about all that some more in a moment. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our assessment of efforts to close the gender gap in Nigerian politics. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyagolu. From the Women's March to the Me Too movement, this year women around the world have been demanding action and driving change for the better. The demographics of Nigerian politics may not have changed drastically in that regard, but as crucial presidential elections drew near earlier this year, a number of women certainly tried to move the goalposts, raising the tantalizing prospect that a female could be Nigeria's number one citizen in 2019. The likes of the formidable Obi Ezekwesili said she was running for president and aiming to win, but then, alas, it all went south and she suddenly and inexplicably withdrew from the race. Well, an international conference has been convened in Abuja to examine why women failed to gain political ground in that election. Before we continue our chat on the subject, here's a bit more of the discussion that's been taking place at that summit. This is an opportunity, like we said, to also start early, to begin to do things differently. Honestly, I have researched, published, and uh, talked to young girls about politics. We need to do things differently. Um, I was highly disappointed at the numbers. Even if it was by 1%, we should see progress but we saw retrogression. It's very disappointing, particularly when I'm associated with the commission at this point in time. We really need to do things differently. If we are sitting the way we are sitting, we need to reorganize and get things on their toes. The importance and role of women in society, politics, and the electoral process cannot be overemphasized. However, it is common practice that women are relegated to insignificant positions and sometimes undermined as weak vessels. This explains why women are rarely considered fit for positions to lead, to change, and to shape the economic, social, and political landscape, or given the opportunity to have a voice or to be heard. However, it is well acknowledged that we cannot build our nation 
without the input and support and contribution of women. Any evolutionary nation building process must take the contributions of women into consideration for progress to be made. As a commission, we are squarely committed to ensuring an all-inclusive electoral process. And as such, we put in measures to ensure the inclusion of women, including paying special attention to marginalized um, uh, women, marginalized women PWDs, marginalized women youths, and marginalized uh, women aged, those who are aged. We paid particular attention to them, everybody during this election. That's a snippet from that international women's conference taking place in Abuja. With me in the studio, the United Nations Women Country Representative to Nigeria and ECOWAS, Comfort Lamte, and Honorable Aishatu Duku, who's a member of the Nigerian House of Representatives from Gombe State in the Northeast. Thank you for staying with us. And I'll start with you, um, Honorable Duku. Um, should there be praise for progress in Nigeria and for the government of President Buhari in the campaign to empower women? I mean, you're a member of his party, the APC. Yeah. I mean, is this country and this administration mm -hmm. falling short of expectations? Of course, there must be press for more women participation. and. Um, well, it seems to have regressed yeah, from the last government. Of course, yes. Um, I'm a member of the House of Representatives. In 2015, we were 22. Mm. And today, we, we are 12. So that's very sad. And, uh, well, I don't know our political affiliation, all of us, and not yet. We are resuming tomorrow. But uh, my political party needs to do a lot. Be and I'm happy that the political party leadership was also invited for the conference, and uh, we have examined. Well, did they turn up for the conference? Well, they had the IPAC. Right. The acting IPAC chairman was What's there. IPAC? IPAC, it's, it's, uh, it's a committee for all the political parties. Right, yes, okay. And the just, just for so our audience knows what you're yes, talking about. Yes, yeah. So, and they need to tell us what are they doing, you know, what is there in their laws that will make it easy for women to participate. It is not just about giving women free form to contest. No, that is good, but that is not good enough. So what is there in the constitution, in the party constitution, that will make it very, you know, very easy for a woman to come contest, you know, and win? And what can they do now before the 2023 uh, general election? Mm. It is a conversation for all of us, the political parties inclusive. Right. Uh, let, me, let me bring in Comfort Lamte from the United Nations there. Just bring us the highlights of the day so far from that conference that opened earlier here in Abuja. What sort of outcomes are you expecting? So what we hope at the end of the two days is that we will have, uh, from all the rich experiences, sometimes opposing experiences mm. also that have been shared, that we will, we will have the elements to, to support what can be a strategy that will women across the different political parties can coalesce around, that we as development partners supporting this agenda can also uh, uh, come together to, to, to put our energies and our resources behind so that we can actually start the process of supporting uh, the road to 2023. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that includes looking at everything from what has to be done by the political parties in terms of the sort of reforms that might be needed, how women themselves need to look at, uh, women seeking political office need to look at themselves and how they strategize to run for, for, for office, how they mobilize resources to support uh, those ambitions, what the media has to do uh, or can do better to support women and, and civil society and so on. So I, I think our hope is that this process is, will be the beginning 
or will lay the foundation mm. for what will be a strategy towards 2023. Well, let me ask you this, Honorable Aisha to Duku. What's the best reason that you can give Nigerians who are either too conservative, too traditional, mm. or who are held back by religious custom for why they should support the cause of women's rights and the participation of women in politics? Thank you very much. I think there is need for a lot of awareness creation. Some of the men are blindly talking about, you know, women that, are, that should not participate, you know, in politics. Well, I saw talking somebody at the National Assembly, <laughs> a man got up and said, absolutely no way are we going to allow women. <laughs> yeah, I'm not yes. joking. So he had no they, qualms they, about saying it at all. There is need for such people, let me say, in court mm. to be educated you know, on the reasons why women should participate in politics because the religion did not say the women should not participate in mm. politics. And then who is Yeah, but better? how would you convince a person like that? That is what I'm saying. Right. How would I convince the person? And of course, I have to uh, educate the person, then create a lot of awareness and use the media to also help educate the public because... Uh, 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 without, you know, understanding the, the rubrics of the Islamic religion, what the religion says about women. Mm. You know, I think we are not get, going anywhere because a lot of it is misunderstanding the religion. And that right. is why we are where we are. Right. But, but at the risk of treading on, on fairly sort of um, sensitive ground yeah. there, Comfort Lamte uh, from the UN, um, how would you define women's rights in the context of what we're talking about just now because it's a matter of different cultures and different perceptions um, for example if a woman remains culturally subservient to a man um, doesn't that make it rather difficult for her to suddenly say well look you know i want to run for office or i want to do this or that you see, you see what i mean w what are the how broad is that definition and are there limits to it well so i mean for uh, as uh, an international uh, organization uh, you know the uh, certainly in nigeria which is the un mm. and nigeria being uh, a member state of the united nations and a signatory to many of the uh, key international agreements that uh, have defined uh, and, 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 and categorized what women's rights means. Mm. Uh, we have what uh, we call the Women's Bill of Rights, the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, which talks about uh, the issues around women in politics and women's participation. Even the, the development frameworks that we're using, the Sustainable Development Goals, we have a specific goal, Goal 5, which talks about ach achieving gender equality. So in terms of our development targets, in terms of the um, agreements that Nigeria has signed on to, there is a consensus, both uh, an international consensus mm. to which Nigeria is a part, that recognizes the need to um, respect and uphold the, the rights of women and men and and for us uh, we, we we also see that this is not that there is the need to do that because it is a right but there is also a, a value in there in terms of the development and growth of the country as a whole so if Nigeria is to achieve its full development potential we cannot have a process where half of the population Absolutely. is not uh, you know, performing mm. optimally and taking part in decision making and bringing issues to the table which may not right. otherwise that, be That's at a the very table. good point. And we've just got about a minute to go. Mm. Um, I shout to Duku. Mm. Mm. Um, Comfort Lamptey there talked about um, quotas, you know, like g legislating gender quotas and so mm. on. How do you improve the numbers of women in leadership? not just in politics, but across the board. But I mean, obviously, particularly yeah, I in politics. strongly support what she said. Mm. I believe in the, um, we can amend the law because the laws are man-made. Well, we you're in the National Assembly. Exactly, we can amend the law mm. to provide for a quota system and for the is woman. Is that something you're going to push for? Of course I will. I will. If, whether it is 5%, 10%, Two percent. Let there be a percentage. And let it be for, entrenched in law. Let it be entrenched in right. law, so that we know that yes, this has been you know allocated to the woman, and from there 
we can move forward. All other countries that have achieved so started from the right. law. Okay. Yes. I want to thank you very much indeed, Honorable Aisha Duku, and of course, uh, Comfort Lamte from the United Nations. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah, thank You're you. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our forensic analysis of the reproaches that stood in the way of women in the 2019 Nigerian elections. We'll be joined by a woman who contested and lost and by the president of a civil society group that supports the political aspirations of women. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anya Golu. Now, as the 2019 elections drew near, the spaces of Nigerian public discourse filled up with speculation about the chances of President Buhari versus various other contenders and whether any of those striving in rivalry with the president would be women, and if so, the possible alignments of political forces that would bring this about and the likely outcomes. Well, one person who didn't wait around for purely conjectural discussions about the important issue of women in politics was Bolanle Sarubi Aliyu, former governorship candidate in Oyo State. And uh, she ran, she lost, though she, I, I presume, disputes the outcome. Um, the other person who stepped up to the plate and lent support to women candidates and aspirants was Zainab Marwa, a lawyer and president of the civil society group Aspire Women's Forum. They've both been attending that international conference in Abuja, assessing the gains and losses made by women in the 2019 Nigerian ballot. Before we speak to them, let's hear a bit more from that summit. The breakdown of elected members show that no woman was elected as president. None was elected as vice president. <laughs> and also none was elected as governor. Only four women got elected as deputy governors. And only seven women elected to the Senate. Why 12 to the House of Representatives? And in all the states, 36 states of the Federation, we got only 44 women elected as members of the State Assembly. And then just one woman elected as a councillor in uh, FCT, Abuja. And then we have almost over 11 states without a single female legislator. Nigerian women went to the elections with high expectations, considering that different groups and donor agencies carried out a lot of activities to ensure more women participation. With the support of UN Women, WIPF with her partners organized an interactive session with leadership of political parties, which led to the endorsing of the Women Charter of Demands by the parties. We also had Aspirant Summit put together by Women in Politics Forum Women Trust Fund and Women Radio. This was to get the women to contest the general elections. The Office of the First Lady, in collaboration with WIPF and other stakeholders, also organized an advocacy summit targeted at party leaders to ensure that women are given tickets across party to contest the elections. Other partners, including ECES, CDD, IFES, UNDP, and all the others supported interventions to improve women's political participation. Well, for more on all that, I'm joined now in the studio by Bolanle Sarumi Aliyu, who contested for the governorship seat on the platform of the National Interest Party and lost, and she's now a member of the People's Democratic Party, and by Zainab Mawa, a lawyer and president of Aspire Women's Forum, a civil society group that lends considerable support to women candidates and aspirants in Nigeria. She also ran and lost. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for coming in. I'll start with you because you're sitting closest to me. Um, do you think you lost that bid because you're a woman? Um, no, I don't think that I lost because I was a woman. But I do think that the position of women in politics 
can be greatly addressed and changed based on what we do from now, looking forward to 2023. So to put this into perspective, you know, we have 200 million people. 200, uh, 2,970 women mm -hmm. ran this time uh, for 2019. Out of them, only 67 actually won. So we have four deputy governors, we have seven senators, we have 12 House of Reps, we have 44 um, you know, state assembly members, and then one councillor in FCT, if you can imagine that. So if you look at it in that perspective, less than 12% of um, aspirants were women, mm. only 4.7% of elected people in Nigeria today are women. That's the main um, you know, conversation. The elections this time around for APC, which is my party, were not good, I think, for men and women alike. There were certain issues which the party is internally trying to address. But I don't think, to answer your question, that I lost because I was a woman, but I think that so many other things came mm. into play because I was a woman. I think that those are the issues that we're trying to focus on now. Right, okay, let me bring in Bolan Lesaremi Aliyu. Um, tell us about your experience in Nigerian politics so far. You ran for governor and you lost. Was that your first outing in politics? Um, yes, it was, um, in contesting. Um, it was a one-year journey, um, an adventure. I loved it. I enjoyed it because politics is in my blood. My dad used to be in the House of Reps back in the 90s. What I discovered is Nigeria is not ready for a new party. It's either you're in APC you, or you you're came in, in a, a party. I contested that, yeah. under um, NIP. Right. However, I was in another party before then, but rigged out of my primaries, and I refused to quit. I continued, right. and the president of the NIP gave me an automatic ticket. Um, I also had a lot of um, uh, members, state house of assembly, from regular homes. I had about 15 of them to contest under NIP. However, you know, the people refused to vote for them because, one, many don't even know what the logo of the party or they can't remember it or they can't understand it. So I think it's still, the battle is still between these two big parties. Mm. Let, let me um, ask you, um, Zainab Mawa, um, I mean, you, you mentioned the fact that you don't think you lost because you're a woman, but how have you, as a woman, been bearing up to the slings and arrows of Nigerian politics, if I can put it that way? Oh, you can put it that way. You can put it with even more words than that. It's been very difficult. You know, politics in Nigeria generally is very difficult. You know, politics anywhere is not an mm. easy game to play but like she said it's in her blood it's in mine as well um but you know in nigeria for women northerners especially because i happen to be well i'm half Igbo, mm. half northern but you know i'm of obviously northern descent and i'm a muslim so there are issues you know concerning that um you know there's this stereotype about women that 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 come out to run for office mm. Um, you know, either you're, you're a prostitute or you're a thief or, you know, you're not interested in family life and things like that. So you have to deal with the stereotypes. It wasn't too bad for me. Um, and I turned a blind ear, if you will, to such things because I know why I joined politics. Mm. I came in to be a nation builder. Mm -hmm. I came in to fight the right cause for women. So I wasn't very you know, interested in what other people had to say about my journey. Um, you know, and my mom always said to me, just focus and um, as long as your heart is in the right place, you would get, you, you know, you would get to where you want to go. But to answer your question, uh, the main things that I did, as I said, I ignored what, what, what was said, but I also noticed that in 2019, um, stroke 2018, what we've seen is that this, this negative stereotype has actually come down mm. so people are bit by bit opening up to the you know the reality that really the people that can fight for women and that can do what is right for women are women so people are understanding that and we're still telling this story and we're still trying to change right. the stereotypes so, so so let me ask you this is that a good way for women to as it were come in if you like through the back door by, by essentially saying, listen, women, you have the vote, go in and vote for other women. I mean, women constitute a significant percentage of the population in Nigeria. 
Definitely, as long as the women have content and they're going to make us proud when they get there. Uh, this period we did a wo no woman, no vote mm. you know, system thing, but it wasn't strong enough. Um, I still think we need to go legal about the issue and uh, like you know, Ru Rwanda has done, Rwanda had to put in a quota system so that you know, more women would be represented you know, in political parties. And I think all these parties need to be checked as well to ensure that they have been free and fair at the primaries, because that's the major step. You well, know. the honest truth is that they are not free and fair to men <laughs> either. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I don't so think there's should, anything they focused should be on women free in and fair. That's what, you know, they should be free and fair. And, you know, because if they rig you out of the primaries and you don't have the spirit to continue, you'll just be deflated and just quit. Right. And we need more women in power. You know, we need the president of Nigeria to ensure that his cabinet is filled with a good proportion of women, as he promised. You know, right. in the in the what the bid to well, the elections. Well, I'd like to talk about that the solution in, in sort of the next section. But just following up on what she was saying, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I've heard women say that they, in addition to the cultural issues that mm -hmm. she she said, the stereotypes and so on, mm -hmm. that some of them have faced sexism when they run for office. I mean, you, you'll, you know, you, you'll come out and you're a serious woman. Clearly, both of you very intelligent. I can see that just listening you. to you. Um, but, but some guy is saying, oh, you're cute and, you know, we're, we're happy to have you in the party, but you're not going to win. You know, <laughs> that sort of gratuitous condescension. Do, do, you, do you come across things like that? No, I didn't. I didn't. I don't know why, but I had a good journey. You know, the other candidates, young men, you know, in the race and most of them hadn't even contested for, you know, any sort of position before. Mm. So many of them don't have godfathers, you know, like myself. So I never had any, any problems. Mm. I never had any problems. And, and did and you I experience phase, that? Because that must be dreadfully me. frustrating when you're trying to be serious and someone is maybe trying to, look at you that. know, <laughs> talk to you in a yeah, sort I'll, of patronizing. I'll tell you what. Patronizing. In, in my case, you spoke about... Um, sexism mm. but there there you know there is actual sexual abuse within politics um thankfully i i, I didn't go through that right. but the condescension i did go through the condescension um i did go through the looks of are you serious mm. you know are you sure you want to do this? You know, FCT mm -hmm. politics isn't for the faint of heart. You know, because <laughs> there were and, and the presumption is that because you're a woman, you're faint heart. Yeah, exactly, that's that's, that's, that's that's the presumption. You know, mm -hmm. and and so when you're speaking, I think that was the only thing that that got to me. And then because of my, you know, my family background, mm. you know, my dad is a public figure in Nigeria, and he's been a nation builder since I was nine years old. Mm. And, you know, you get that look like, oh, because you think you're Marwa's daughter, that's why you, you yes. want to come out. Do you know what I mean? So there is that that condescension from different angles. You're a woman because you're, you know, you're this person's daughter. So it's... it's but in it's, spite of that, you march in on. In spite forge of that, head. I mm. forge ahead gallantly with my head mm. and, and I, I, I would dare say <laughs> that those are, those are the qualities <laughs> you need to be a leader you've got to survive the, <laughs> sort of the, the slings and the arrows stay with me you're watching the arise interview plenty more still ahead as we continue our analysis of the reproaches that stood in the way of women in the 2019 nigerian elections and how to overcome them stay with us Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anier Gordon. Now, according to the United Nations uh, and a host of other leading organizations, Nigeria has one of the lowest rates of female participation in parliament. Uh, women hold only about 5% of seats in Nigeria's state assemblies, despite women making up half the electorate. Experts suggest that women could be deterred from entering politics by a patriarchal society and a lack of transparency in the candidate selection process. A number of those experts from around the world are in Abuja, attending an international conference on women's political participation in Nigeria following the 2019 general elections. In a moment, we'll speak to some of those experts. But first, here's a bit more of the discussion taking place on the opening day of that conference. 
As practitioners, we have seen um, this um, particular complaint from women coming. All the challenges that women have listed today, men also suffer it. When you talk about access to media, you talk about access to you know, uh, money and all that. There are other categories of people who don't have their resources. But the fact is that we have, as Interparty Advisory Council level, we have, we have sat down and we have brought out innovation that will help women participation in politics. And that is key. Because for us, we are not looking at 35% at the government's level. We are not looking at 35% at appointment level. We are looking at 35% inclusion into the requirement that is necessary to register a political party so that when we, for all level so that women will be uh, for every level of the political party administration be at the world be at the local government be at the state and national women will have 35 percent representation in the administrative structure of the political party because why is this one key it's key because that is where the decision is taken for you to say you are elected for you to say you become candidate for you to say you are appointed this is where decisions are taken inside the internal structures of political party so that's why we believe that in the current amendment that ipac is going to propose to the national assembly and also support through other stakeholders is that we're going to be requesting that in the section that requires registration of political party from 221, 222 to 229, that that section the, might be amended to add another section, either section 29B or 29A, as requirement that every new ent um, registering party association who wants to become political party, we, are, we have for them to become political party. That well, I'm glad to see the men are coming on board for more on all that. I'm joined in the studio by Bolanle Sarumi Aliyub, who contested for the governorship seat on the platform of the National Interest Party and lost. She's now a member of the People's Democratic Party. And by Zainab Mawa, a lawyer and president of Aspire Women's Forum, a civil society group that lends considerable support to women, candidates and aspirants in Nigeria. She also ran and lost. Thank you very much indeed to both of you for staying with us. So Thank what you. is the solution? Because clearly cultural and religious conservatism isn't going to vanish overnight. Um, I think that we need to get this conversation going just like we're doing now with this wonderful conference. Um, what UN Women is doing is just amazing. I think we need to speak more about the inclusion of more women. We need to look for practical ways to close the gap. So, you know, you talk about laws and you talk about things like that, but at the end of the day, it's people that are making these decisions. And with or without laws, if you don't speak to the minds of the people mm. in the positions to make such decisions, I think that we, we haven't even started yet. So for example, if you're in a party where perhaps the you know the, the, the people up there as as it were you know the orgas at the top mm. don't actually believe that women should be in uh, political positions decision making positions leadership positions and you change perhaps the charter of the party or the constitution of the party i don't think that you've done anything so i think the main um practical solution now is to try and lobby the people that make the decisions, the people that say, okay, women should be included, or the mm. people that you know make the appointive decisions in the parties. When you're talking about elections, first of all, you have to go through the party primaries. So for example, I did, mm. and I didn't go through the primaries. So it doesn't matter um, if I'm a woman or a man, if you don't go through, you don't get to test yes. the people. So I think that those are the main things that we need to do is to lobby right. and to engage in more conversation. Okay, uh, that's a good point. Um, Mm -hmm. because for any fundamental change, legal change certainly to happen, you need legal reform. And, and the National Assembly has to adopt legislation and pass a law to give effect to that gender quota. But the Assembly is full of men. very conservative <laughs> men. Do you see this happening anytime soon? I don't. Talking about the um, honorable member that said, don't give women power. Yeah. Da, 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 da. Imagine people like that in the house. How it's are we women going to get there? Yeah. You know, and we're losing out because that is what this government is lacking. They're lacking more women in, in, in the government. Mm. Where you have more women in a, in a country ruling or, or leading or governing or serving, you would have improvements in the welfare of the people because we know the qualities that women have. However, the best they give us is probably Minister of Women Affairs and mm. then women leaders up and down. No, you've got the finance minister. Well, thanks, thanks for that. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean that, that patronizingly. Yeah. I just mean that, So you know. Yeah, and then like um, Barrister was saying about the grassroots, it's very important to educate them because mm. I, 
I, I did that a lot in my own campaign. I went to areas where you have, you know, strict Muslims, and I told them, I said, look, don't let anyone fool you. It's in the book of Islam mm. that if anyone wants to serve, irregardless, male or female, check what qualities they have and let them serve. Mm. So God never discriminated a woman against a man. But, you know, it's something that's been cooked over the years. It'll take a while. And for me, I couldn't win because the person who won, which is my governor now, He'd been on the mission for almost 12 years, mm. and he'd invested greatly in the people. So when people saw me, they were like, wow, we love the idea. No woman has contested in or your state before. However, sorry, we want to vote for him first. Yeah. And I'm like, go ahead, whatever your conscience wants but to do. But the fact that you were a woman came into play, because as, they were saying no woman. They didn't say no, this human being. They said mm -hmm. this woman. Mm -hmm. But they loved it in your state. I never had any discrimination right. against, you're a woman, we're not voting you in. I'm sure, you know, you know the southwestern states are friend you know female how do i say it? gender friendly yeah. so i never had that issue the issue Certainly was progressive the, yeah, yeah the person yeah. who won had tried for so long and he'd been investing in the lives of the people we're right. talking 12 year journey and mine was just a year journey that's why i'm supporting him he's doing great in my state i've told him he's going to serve us for eight years not right. just four years well, well and well, then well, after then we'll come out okay <laughs> well i hope to see you there then I will. but, but we've, we're almost out of time <laughs> how much of a political earthquake would it be in Nigeria if a woman emerged as not only the main challenger in 2023, but possibly a winner? It would be fantastic. It would be a, a seismic event. Yeah. It would be a seismic event. But and can you see that needed. sort of I, seismic, I, I, seismic I, I, shift in I the can. gender balance of power taking place I in can. Nigeria? In, in 2023, we've got four years to drum no this, woman, no this discussion mm. into the heads of women and men and the Youths. people at the mm. top and the young and the old alike for a, a possible candidate in Nigeria, a woman, why not? It's okay. very possible, yeah. Well, on that <laughs> optimistic note, I want to say thank you very much indeed to Zainab Marwa, who's thank a lawyer you. and president of Aspire Women's Forum, and of course, Bolanle Sarami Aliyu, who you, is a governorship uh, candidate on the platform of the National Interest Party. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for having us. Well, that's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again for a fresh edition tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja. Bye-bye, and thank you for watching.